Good morning, Mr. Simpson. Good morning. Did you do any preparation for today's session? Absolutely none. <clears throat> Last night you gave a, an interview on television? That's correct. Was there any discussion about this lawsuit? I don't recall if he asked me a question, but it would be on the tape. You don't remember? No. Um, when you came downstairs uh, the first time and picked up your golf cover bag and picked it up and sort of signaled to the limousine driver, mm -hmm. did, uh, do you know if the lim limousine driver saw you do that? I don't know if he did, no. Did he acknowledge to you that he had seen you? Well, his lights were on, so I couldn't see if he did. Could you see the driver in the car? No, I couldn't. So after you put the bag down and went upstairs, at that moment in time, you you did not know whether the driver had seen you. Is that right? Didn't give it a thought. Is that right? Correct. <clears throat> when you um, went to McDonald's, did you go straight there and straight back to the house? Correct. How long did it take to drive there? I don't know. Approximately. I don't know. Well, you know where it's located, correct? Yes. You drove at normal speed? Yes. About 10 minutes? I don't know. I mean, to get there? Yeah. It shouldn't be much more than 10 minutes. Yeah. And how long did it take to get the food? I don't know. Five or 10 minutes? I don't know. I was not paying any attention if there was other cars in front of us or not. I don't have any recollection of you that. Don't, you don't recall it being a particularly long wait or anything like that, correct? Mm, one way or the other, no. Okay. And that 10 minutes to get back? Approximately, I guess. Do you think you were gone all told about a half an hour? Well, approximately, yeah. Or less? I don't know. From the time that you came back from McDonald's and went into the house, until the time that you picked up the phone in your bedroom and spoke to Alan Parks. Did you see any person? Uh, no. Did any person see you? I wouldn't know that. To your knowledge? Did any person, know. to your knowledge, did any person see you? I, was, I had knowledge. I don't know who was where and who was looking. So I didn't see anybody. So I don't know who saw me or not. And you weren't with anyone, correct? Correct. And d during that time period, did you speak to anyone? Yes. Who? Sidney Simpson, Christian Reichardt, possibly uh, Michelle. Are we talking about after he got back? Yeah. He says, but yes, that was my question. Let yeah. me let me let me reframe it. I understand. Well, I'm, could I have the last question about that? Uh, Senator Peck, please. No, that's wrong. I talked to them before I left. I'm I'm correcting myself. I spoke to them before I left. He's, he's that's what I thought you had yes. said yesterday. Yes. Okay. Just let me wake up here. Okay. Let's let me ask that question again, okay. Mr. Simpson. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, you know, I, he asked me to read something. I, I took my hands. I did not get that last well, interview. We want to hear the previous record. question, though, yeah. before you go back. Wait, wait, wait. It's getting tight. So, what's, where, where question, are you? Question, and during that time period, did you speak to anyone? Answer, yes. Question, who? Yeah. Answer, Sidney Simpson, Kristen Reichardt, possibly Michelle. Yeah. That was before I went to the back. Go back one more question, please. Question, to your knowledge, no, I'm sorry. To your knowledge, did any person see you? Answer, I don't have knowledge. I don't know who was there and who was looking. I didn't see anybody, so I don't know who saw me or not. Question, and you weren't with anyone, correct? Answer, correct. Question, <coughs> and during that time period, did you speak to anyone? Answer, yes. Question, who? Answer, Sidney Simpson, Christian Reichardt, possibly Michelle. You know, Mr. Simpson, while we were off the record a moment, you said you wanted to correct yourself. Yes, I was uh, doing the time I got home, that was the case, but I spoke to them before I went to McDonald's. Okay, so after... That was right before I went to McDonald's. That you spoke to them. Yes. Is that what you're saying? That's correct.
clear on that? Yes. From the time um, that you came back from McDonald's and went into the house until the time that you picked up the phone in the bedroom and spoke to Alan Parks, yes. did you speak to anyone? No, not personally, no. You added the word personally. I don't know whether that changes anything. But the question is, during that time frame, did you speak to anyone? No. Did anyone speak to you? No. <clears throat> during that time frame, do you know of any person other than yourself who can account for your whereabouts? No. Let me show you um, the next, uh, the document which I will mark as the next exhibit in order. Um, 41. Exhibit 41. Copies of this. No, I don't have them here. Uh, for other counsel to see, I'm going to be showing. Um, it's Peter, they're over there, Peter, I think. Photocopy I have photocopied it, not in color, okay? Um, while we're passing out the copies, Mr. Simpson, I'll show you what I'm going to ask you a question about. Is there a trial exhibit number on that? Um, yeah. Exhibit 120. Trial exhibit 120. Mm -hmm. This is our exhibit one. 41, and here's yours. I'm going to have you mark on the uh, trial, uh, the deposition exhibit, Mr. Simpson, but I just showed this colored photo to you so that it was a little clearer. What I'd like you to do is go to the, um, the photo in the top right-hand corner, mm -hmm. um, this one. You see that? Yes. Now, that depicts what? Uh, the front entry of my house. And the distance between the front door and the beginning of the driveway, you approximated yesterday at 15 feet, correct? Right? 15 feet. Okay. And when you uh, came out um, the first time partially uh, dressed and picked up the golf cover bag and laid it down, motioned to the limousine driver, you said yesterday you came out approximately halfway. Is no, I right? came to the bench, which is approximately halfway. So you came to the west end of the bench. To the west end of the bench, <coughs> which is approximately halfway. Uh, that's out incorrect. to the driveway, correct? That's totally incorrect. What is incorrect about that? It's not approximately halfway. What is it? Probably three quarters of the way. Okay, could you um, mark um, where you came out? When? I mean, I came out. Uh, I'm only talking come. about this one point in time when you came downstairs, partially dressed, picked up your golf cover bag, motioned to the limousine driver, put it down on the ground. And you want me to mark it on here? No, you did it yesterday. Okay. He's not going to do it today. Oh. Mark. You did it yesterday. Don't mark it. Well, this is a, I have an exact picture of the location, Mr. Uh, Baker, and I don't know that he did yesterday, but I'll take he, your word for it if he, he did. He marked on your drawing, and again, it was, as I suggested to you, inaccurate. This is 
<clears throat> a shot that doesn't show, in my opinion, any level of breadth because it's tunneled into his front door. And uh, I don't know how you could you could actually mark on that to, to give any sense of uh, how far out of the well, door he came. Okay, do you see where the benches extend out? No. Uh, do you, see, you have benches on either side, right? Yes. And did you go past uh, the, the benches? I told you approximately to that end of the bench. I don't know exactly the foot that I went to. But approximately, approximately to the end of the bench? Yes. Okay, that's as far as you went. That's where I threw the clubs down. And then yes. you didn't go out any farther past that point? No further past that point. And then point. you went back inside? That's correct. Okay. I didn't go to the driveway. Anywhere in there I could have been, but I didn't go to the driveway. I wasn't marking, take one step here and one step there, but I never made it to the driveway. When you, um, okay. When you pulled your Bronco out uh, to park it for the last time on um, Rockingham, you pulled it out, made a right, and parked it? That's correct. Okay. And, um, well, why don't we use this exhibit again, number 41. You see where the, um, the Bronco is situated in the top um, uh, left-hand corner of the exhibit? Yes. Is that where you parked it? Uh, yes. And that's where you left it? Yes. Is the distance from the Rockingham gate to the front door um, the same, greater, or less than the distance from the Ashford gate to the front door, in your opinion? I don't think Rockingham is further. In light of that, what was the reason why you didn't park on Ashford? and then push the door open, as you are able to do without a key, if you did not have a key, and then walk to the front door. It was asked and answered these. yesterday. Thank you. Excuse me? It was asked and answered yesterday. You can answer it one more time. For at least, well, never mind. I didn't want my dog to run out. But when you pulled the uh, car out uh, to park it on Rockingham, your dog could still run out. But he didn't run out, as I explained to you yesterday. I looked, I didn't see him, and if he ran out, I was there. I was there to say, come on, Chachi, come back in. But you were in the car. Well, I got out of the car to come back in. But you could have got parked around the corner and... Um, and he'd they, have been gone down the other corner. Okay, well, let me ask you this one question then. Jesus. If you, um, no matter where you parked, when you pull out of the Rockingham gate, the gate is still open for the same length of time regardless of where you parked, correct? Correct. Your, your, uh, your state of mind at that time, Mr. Simpson, was that if you pulled out of the Rockingham gate and parked there, you were in a better position to get the dog, is that what you're saying? My state of mind at that time was to park the car and come back in, and I wasn't in the mood to go for Chachi. So I didn't want Chachi to go out of that gate. So that was my state of mind, yes. But it was still possible for Chachi to leave the gate, though? No. Chachi is a relatively trained dog. If I'm there, she won't go out. If I say, no, Chachi, come here, she'll come there. When you exit that gate to leave the property to go someplace else, yes. uh, your dog can get out at any, any time, correct? As I explained to you already, I thought in detail, normally I sit at the gate every morning when I go to play golf. I wait till the gate starts closing before I drive out of the gate. To, to make morning. sure the dog doesn't to make leave. make sure the dog doesn't leave. And you could have done so on this occasion, correct? I didn't need to. You could have you could have exited, waited to see that the dog wasn't coming out. When the gate closed, you could have parked in your normal spot on Ashford, correct? But why would I, since I wasn't going anywhere? So I could just step out of the car, which took me a matter of seconds, and say, come on, Chachi, don't go anywhere. But you could have done so, correct? It would have been stupid possible. to do so. <laughs> it would have been stupid to do so. In fact, that's what you usually did, correct? No. Because I don't usually park my car and walk back in. When you park your car on Ashford, how do you get into the house? I push the gate open. And you could have done so that evening, correct? I didn't want to do that so that evening. I didn't want to chase my dog. I understand what you're saying, but there was nothing to prevent you from doing so, correct? No, it wasn't. Correct? Correct. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
What's the total amount of time uh, that you can estimate from you, Mr. Simpson, that that gate uh, remains open such that the dog could get out? I don't know. Is it more than um, 60 seconds? I don't think so. Is it more than 30 seconds? Mm, possibly. Between 30 and 60 seconds? Yes. Does the, does the gate work the same way now as it did in June of 1994? I believe so. Here you go, Peter. Can, can I have a, this picture, Peter? Do you want this? I'm going to attach as the next exhibit in order, Exhibit 42. And <clears throat> this is a picture of your Ford Bronco, correct? one you had in 1994, correct? I believe so. And that's exactly how you parked it when you last parked it on the evening of June 12th, correct? I can't say that. Does it appear to be the way you parked it? Yeah, approximately, yes. Okay. You don't have any reason to believe that it is in a different location than where you last left it, correct? That's correct. That's trial exhibit 137. I don't know how I just lost my pen, but I did. You're also on the watch the mic. My wires here today. Okay, here, Peter. Can I, have, can I have this photo next? What does that note say? I really can't read it. I need to It's a communication to my client. I don't intend to give it to you. Passing uh, notes during the deposition? Yes. Why? Because I want to communicate <laughs> with my client. Can't read it, though. <laughs> What's the next exhibit? 44? 43. 43? Uh, Mr. Simpson, you can return that one to Peter. I'm going to show you the next exhibit, number 43. Um, also, the um, color copy that I have. Mm -hmm. uh, do you recognize uh, what's in the exhibit? It appears to be my car. In, on your. Um, in your driveway at Rockingham, right? Mm, correct. The car being the Bentley? Yes. The car in the front, right? Yes. And whose car is the one in the back? My daughter's, it appears to be. What car um, is that? Mm, what is it? A Saab, I believe. And that's what she had in June of 1994? Yes. Is the Bentley I I depicted in this photograph in the location where you last parked it on the evening of June 12th? It appears to be. Is that uh, where you normally park it? Yes. And when you left the premises that evening, was uh, were there any cars in the park, no. uh, in the driveway? Well, my Bentley. Other than the Bentley? No. And Arnell's car was not there? No. Okay. And when you uh, left the, uh, the golf, uh, the white golf ball bag and that bluish bag um, outside the Bentley, after you finished uh, hitting golf balls, was it right out uh, the other side of the trunk there in the back of the car? What does that mean? I don't know what you said. I mean, where exactly did you leave uh, the two bags in reference to your Bentley? I would say roughly, this is just not a good picture to show you that on. I'd, I'd be estimating. On this behind picture. the Bentley, correct? Behind the Bentley. Uh, how, the how many feet behind the Bentley? I don't know. Where are Nell's cars currently situated? Possibly, to, yeah, possibly in that area, near there, yes. Was it within 10 feet of the Bentley? Mm, I don't know. Or closer? I, I really couldn't tell you. But I know it was near the grass and the Bentley, somewhere between the grass and the Bentley. W was it farther from the Bentley than um, the back of Arnell's car is depicted I, I in this photo? I can't tell how her car is parked there. I really can't. And was it close to the garage? If you give me another picture, I can give you a much better example. This picture, there's no way of showing you 
uh, what's going on with this picture. Well, if I had another picture handy, I would show it to you, but I, I don't have one at my disposal. No, I can't work from this picture. Until but, it, but your best memory, then, is how many feet from the back of the Bentley did you leave those two bags? I don't have any uh, estimate. Is it less than 10 feet, though? I don't know. Could have been more? They could have been. Have no recollection? No. Sure. Oh, this one's mine. Where's mine? Uh, Mr. Baker uh, didn't get one, he said. Well, oh, if you got one over here, I'm sorry. Oh, we're giving them to... Uh, okay, thank you. I Mr. appreciate Mr. Blazer that. has replaced you as the repository for the exhibits. This one. Mr. Bailey's replaced me as lead counsel, and Mr. <laughs> Blazer's replaced me. I'm, I just am totally replaced. And Mr. Cochran has replaced you on the uh, traveling squad. This is a good thing. This one. And I want to replace you on the golf squad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show you as the next exhibit in order, Exhibit 44. Trial Exhibit 141. May I communicate in private yes. with my lawyer? Okay. I'll show you the color photo too, Mr. Simpson. We're, we're going to mark the. Uh, well, this is a video. What are you pointing to, Mr. Baker? I was pointing to the numbers. It appears, because it's such a poor photo, it appears it's off of video. That's what... Is that what it looks like? It does to me. Uh, Probably right. Um, what is this a picture of, Exhibit 44? Uh, part of my kitchen. Uh, the way it looked in, in June of 1994? Uh, to what degree are you asking me that? I mean, is that I mean, the condition? The that's the configuration, yes. Okay. Uh, where in the kitchen... Okay. You wanna you wanna elucidate what this is, Mr. Blazer? I think it's a police picture. Okay. Where in this photograph, um, Mr. Simpson, did you, if, if it if you can tell by this photograph, uh, were you standing when you noticed the um, little spot of blood on your left pinky? I can't tell by this photograph. It, it, the area is not depicted in this photograph? Correct. Okay. And in what direction of the of the kitchen were you standing? Or where? I believe. I could have been at this sink, but I'm pretty confident I was at this sink over here. Uh, beyond the uh, bottom right-hand corner, is that right? Correct. And where was Kalen uh, looking for the uh, he flashlight? In, he was inside this cupboard, cap, cupboard over here. Over there? Yeah. And where did you get the paper towel to... Um, you know, apply it to the uh, the blood on your finger. It was over there by the sink. Oh, there's another sink in this area here. Yes. Okay. Can you identify for the record where the witness is pointing? He's pointing. To the sure. To the He's pointing <laughs> to um, the area to the right of uh, where the picture cuts off. There appears to be a kitchen table and some chairs. Yes. And to the right of that is the sink area. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Did you, after you came home from the recital, um, go any place off of your property in your car other than McDonald's? And so I'm clear, are you talking about the Bentley as contrasted to the Bronco? Either car. Well. I mean, he said he pulled the Bronco out and parked it. Right. Not that's off the property. Okay, not counting that. Did you travel any place off of the property in one of your cars from the time you got back to the recital up until the time you left for McDonald's? No. Did you uh, get in the car to go someplace and then change your mind? I, I, I was, I, by the time I got in my car, I had changed my mind. And which car did you get into? The, the Bentley, I believe it was, but I had changed my mind before I got in. I mean, I'm sorry, the Bronco, but I changed my mind before I got into it. And when you got into the Bronco, it was parked where? Uh, on Ashford. And you got into the Bronco to go where? I had already changed my mind. I got in the Bronco to bring it inside my gate. When you went out to the Bronco, um, 
you were contemplating going where before you changed your mind? Before I went out to the Bronco, I was contemplating going to Paula's. And what caused you to change your mind? I was a little tired and I hadn't heard from her. So I just decided that I was not to go. And you didn't go? And I didn't go. At that <clears throat> moment in time, did you call her to see if she was home? I might have, but I don't, I don't know. I might have. Did you tell um, Detectives Van Adder and Lang that you were going to her house? Yeah. Was that a true statement? Well, I was going to her house, but I didn't go. In the sense that you just described? Yes. You didn't tell Van Adder and Lang that you were, um, that you called Paula from your car? Well, I may have, yes. Why did you tell him that? Because I was very tired and the two nights were running into one another for me, Friday night, I'm sorry, Saturday night and, and Sunday night. And at the time, I may have been somewhat confused, but obviously there's no phone record in my car at that time calling Paula when obviously Saturday night when I was driving to her house, I called her in my car. Mr. Simpson, is there anything else that you said to uh, Van Adder and Lang during that police statement, which uh, you now know to be incorrect or now believe to be incorrect? Well, don't don't answer that, that question. Don't, yeah, okay. Excuse me? I'm not sure if that was incorrect. I don't believe that was incorrect. Is there anything that you said to Van Adder and Lang when you gave your police statement that you now think is incorrect? I didn't think that was incorrect. Is there anything that you said to them that you think now is incorrect. I would have to read the police report. Does anything come in to your mind? Mm, not immediately, okay. you know, not, imme not, not immediately, no. You want him to take the time to read it? No, I just want to know whether you, as you sit here today, testify, are aware of anything that you said to Van Adder and Lang that you since have learned or discovered or believe uh, to have been incorrect. No, I, I don't think so. When they were talking to me, I was uh, very tired, and uh, I n was just trying to recall what, when they were asking me questions, I was trying to uh, uh, answer them as honestly as I could, but sometimes, like, I at one point was confused if I got the flowers after the concert, which would have been impossible, but that was just a condition of the condition I was in. When was the last time you uh, read that statement? <laughs> well, uh... Okay. Yeah, you can answer that. That you, you actually read it, okay. I may have read it two weeks ago. Is that the last time you've looked at it? Yeah, I don't think I read the whole thing. I just looked at it two weeks ago. The last time that you've seen it, correct? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> what did you look at? I don't know. I mean, other than it's been on the table here, you're excluding that. Yeah, yeah I right. haven't. Yeah, other than if you had seen it. Well, since the deposition has begun, other than maybe seeing it in my possession here, or your lawyers, have you actually studied it or read it or reviewed no, it at all? No, I, I think I just skimmed over it at that time, but I... Two weeks ago? It may have been two weeks ago. It may have been around the time I was doing the, uh, whenever I was doing the video. And when you skimmed it, did you notice anything that, uh, that was incorrect in... When, when you say incorrect, it was just I was tired then and my perceptions on some things I don't think were as clear as I had wished. But fortunately, uh, I guess maybe unfortunately, uh, virtually everything that we talked about in that 33 minutes, we talked about after and before, uh, and of course they didn't record that. So it was whatever questions they had that they weren't clear on was cleared up with Van Adder and Lane before and after. Well, let's talk about that. Uh, you had mentioned that uh, or alluded to that a couple of days ago. Yes. What did you say to Van Adder and Lang that was not contained in the 33-minute statement? I answered all their questions. Whatever questions they asked me that, that's not in there, I, uh, I answered. When, when, you, when, when that statement, uh, the written statement was, um, or the, it was a tape recorded statement, correct? That portion of it was, yes. And you knew that it was being tape recorded, right? Yes. They told you, right? Yes. Now, um, was there, um, had the discussion with Van Adder and Lang begun earlier, and then at some point they said, OJ, we want to start taping you, is that what happened? Yes. Okay. And then um, after the tape 
went off, did, did, did they tell you that they were shutting off the tape? Yes. And then did the discussion continue? Yes. And how long was the discussion with Van Adder and Lang uh, before the tape went on? Uh, in the car going downtown, in the room, and whatever time that was. I, I, my, my concept of time was, uh, was just, mm, just not, not functional that day. Have both Van Adder and Lang were in the car with you going downtown? I don't know if both were in the car with me. It may have been just Van Adder. I'm not sure. Anybody else besides Van Adder and you? Uh, in the car. If it would have been, it would have been police officers. Okay. And uh, so when you got to the police, you went directly from Rockingham to the police station, right? Correct. And then you went to a room yes. with Van Adder? Yes. And I believe Van Adder or Lang. I didn't, at the time, I wasn't registering who they were. But yeah. when you got to the police station, Mr. Simpson, you went directly to this room, right? Yes. No stops in between. Correct. I don't recall. And, and when you got to the room, who was there? Well, they were there, and some other guys were coming in and out. I gathered police officers, and then at one point, my lawyers came in, and they left the room. They being who? Whatever police officers were there. You don't remember? No. Now, did you have a discussion with Van? With Van was Lang in the room, too? You know, there were, there were guys coming in and out, so I can't really, I don't, I couldn't register that at this point. Okay. Well, I'll get back to that. In the car with Van Adder, was he uh, in the back seat with you? I don't think so, but I really don't remember. I don't, I don't, I don't recall. You were in the back seat, right? Yes, I was in the back he seat. He was in the front seat? Yes, and I he, believe so. He asked you questions about uh, the well, facts he, and circumstances uh, surrounding uh, Nicole's death? Yes, he was saying we got some problems, basically, and, uh, and he was talking. Have you ever seen any... Um, written statement of the discussion you had with Van Adder and Lang in the car? No. Have you ever put down that information in writing? Me? Yeah. No. Have you ever seen any um, written statement of your discussion with Van Adder and Lang in the, in the police uh, department room other than what's on the tape? No. And did you ever make a memo of that? Or write write those statements down or your thoughts about that write them down no and the rest I think would be attorney client and the rest privilege. being what whatever conversations I have with my attorney my attorneys well apart from telling your attorneys what happened there I'm, I'm I just want to know if there's a document a piece of paper a tape recording a memorandum that sets forth uh, what you say happened in these unrecorded portions of your discussions with these two police officers mm, not that I know of okay <coughs> Okay, tell me now what uh, Van Adder asked you and what you said in the car. I don't know. He was just talking about uh, some problems, and I can't be. I, I don't. I can't recall it specifically in the car, specifically after, before and after the tape interview. I mean, in general, I do, but specifically, I, I can't. I can't tell you. But in general, I could. So what you're saying is that right now you can't separate out what was said in the car versus what was said before and after the tape recording. Is that right? Yeah, my timing, I was uh, kind of in a bad way that morning. Okay. Uh, when we get to the, um, to the police department room, um, did there come a time when um, you sat down with Van Adder and Lang and your lawyers were out of the room and it was just the three of you? Yes. And then you began to talk, right? I, I was talking well, I, whatever they were asking me all the okay. time. Wait, well, wait, wait, I mean, then he began to talk. I, I, I don't, don't mean it that way. Let me, no. let me uh, withdraw it. Then, then a discussion among the three of you began when they were asking you questions, right? Mm, yes. Now, when that discussion began, is that when the tape went on? The first time, yes. What do you mean by the first time? Well, at one point, they... Um, started the tape and they said something and asked me if I understood it. I said, yeah, because that's what you guys tell me. They can't be in here. I'm sorry. You said, yeah. That's yeah, yeah, because you guys said they can't be in here. And uh, then they stopped the tape and started to say, oh, come on, OJ, we're just trying to get this thing over with so you can go home and we can do things and da, 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 da. And I said, OK. And then they, you know, got me a Coke and uh, started all over again. And that's what happened. 
So what you're saying is that they began to tape you, and then the, the tape stopped, and you had this kind of discussion off the tape, right? Yeah. And they got you coke, you came yeah. back in, and you started up again, right? Uh, yes. Now, is the first part of that conversation before they set off, before they sh turned off the tape, do you know whether that re is reflected in the police statement? No, it's not. It's not? Okay. No. Um, so tell me then um, what was said during that time, as best as you can recall, before the tape was turned off. So oh, that was, uh, they would just read me the right, and you have the right to have an attorney present and whatever, and my, and do you understand that? And I said, yeah, well, you guys tell me I can't have an attorney present. And that's, they stopped the tape and started, oh, come on, OJ, we're, look, if you want them in here, we're just trying to rush this thing so you can go back home, and we can get to the thing. Do you want a Coke? Uh, do you want to talk? You don't really have to talk. I say, yeah, I'll, guys, I'll answer whatever questions you want. They got me a Coke. Um, you know, everybody settled down again, and then they started over again. Did you agree uh, to talk with him without your lawyer? Yes. Okay. Um, did they say to you, we want to rush this thing? Well, they said that, you know, you look tired, you, you want to go home, I know, and we want to get you out of here, and uh, two words to that effect, yes. And you were tired, right? Oh, yes. And you wanted to go home, right? I wanted to see my kids, I wanted to go home, I wanted to... I don't know what I wanted to do. Okay, so in terms of uh, information that you gave about the case, no nothing happened in that part of the tape, is that right? Correct. Okay. And uh, before they turned on the tape, uh, there wasn't any information given out about the case either, right? What I, the you mean between the time of the first tape and the time the second tape started, is that what you're saying? Or are you saying at before, any time in that room? Okay, let, let, me, let me start a little bit. <clears throat> Uh, I'm trying to find out whether there was information that you gave them in answer to their questions about the case, so to speak, um, that's not on this tape. Yes. And so far you've told me that this first portion, when you guys were off the record, wasn't really about the facts of the case, correct? Correct, yeah. Okay, so now before, um, uh, okay, after they got you the coke, they, they turned the tape on and the statement is recorded, right? Yes. Now after that tape went off, and they turned it off, what, what happened next? Uh, they talked to me for a while. Then my lawyers came in. Then uh, they took me uh, to take blood, and they talked to me all the way there. When I was sitting there waiting to take blood, they talked and questioned me. And then finally, they took me back to my lawyers. Okay, now, from the time that they um, turned the tape off until the time they delivered you to your lawyers, during that time, tell me what they asked you and what you said about the case. Well, uh, they we talked again because I don't think they asked me who I went to McDonald's with on the tape, but they we had talked about all of that before they started the tape. And I'm not sure if you can look at the transcript, but uh, I don't believe they really talked to me about it. They knew that, and that's why they didn't talk about it on the tape because they had, during the interview before that, they talked to me about everything that I had done. Um, then after, they talked to me again about my luggage, uh, where was it, um, um, uh, continued to talk to me about my cut hand. Uh, and just, as I said, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to differentiate because they talked to me about everything. And, um, and all the, when I was in jail and I was reading the police report, oh, I noticed that in that tape, a lot of things that weren't in there that we discussed. As I said, who I went to McDonald's with, I don't believe is in there. Uh, and we, they certainly knew that uh, because we discussed it. Uh, my luggage, we certainly discussed. Um, everything. I mean, we talked about everything. I, it's just hard for me to differentiate what was on the tape and what was off the tape because I was trying to be helpful. And I was answering everything they asked me. At no point in time did I say, I can't answer that or go get a lawyer. I won't talk about that. Before the uh, tape went on the very first time, uh, you said that you had told, you had talked to them all about uh, the things they were asking you. Yes. Okay. When you talked to them before the tape went, went on, all about the things they were asking you, was there anybody else present? Van Lang. I think there was another guy coming in and out. Were your lawyers there? Uh, possibly from time to time, because it was just a general conversation going on, and 
Possibly. And who were those lawyers? Uh, Leroy Taft and uh, Howard Weitzman. Okay, so Weitzman and Taft heard or participated in part of this conversation? Possibly. I, I'm not sure because when they were there, they were talking to them and not so much to me. And when they weren't there, they were just talking to me. But when they were, when you were being asked things like about going to McDonald's with Cato and your luggage and all these other subjects, before the tape went on, mm -hmm. uh, Taft and Weitzman were there part of the time? I'm not sure. Possibly. As I said, things were, you know, if they'd be talking to Weissman or Tap, they'd go here, then they'd talk to me, and people were moving around, and I, I was just, I was not, not paying attention to what everybody was doing. Well, Weissman and Tap during this time period in a different room than you? Once, yeah, they came in and out of the room that I was in, yes. And is it your sense of this that before the tape went on, you had in effect told them, you know, everything that you knew that they had asked you? Uh, I can't say everything. I don't know what I knew. I mean, I answered the questions of what I was doing, basically. And they, they had questioned you pretty completely on uh, what where, what your whereabouts were. Well, I yes. don't know pretty completely. I don't mean. know what pretty completely. Well, but they, they had asked you a lot of questions about your whereabouts, about the luggage, about McDonald's, all those sorts of issues and before the uh, tape went on for the first time. Is that right? Correct. Correct. And to this day, you have never seen a statement of that part of the interview. Is that right? No, but I think it's pretty apparent if you look at the interview that they knew all of those things by the way they asked me the question in the interview because I had already told them that. And to this day, you have never seen a statement of that part of the interview. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. <clears throat> what, what did you tell the officers off the tape about uh, McDonald's. Told them who I went to McDonald's with. Um, and essentially everything that's on the tape. Approximately what time we left. Uh, and whatever's on the tape uh, about McDonald's uh, is what I told them. What I'm asking you, Mr. Simpson, is to tell me, since I don't have a document where I can read it, what you said to them. Not, not the description of the subject matters, but what you said. I don't recall two years later my words for what I said. I told them, I answered them approximately what time I went to McDonald's. I answered them who I went to McDonald's with. Um, and you told them, for example, that you went to McDonald's with Cato Kalin, is that right? Correct. And what time did you tell, tell them that you went to McDonald's? I told them approximately 9 o'clock. And what time did you tell them that you came back from McDonald's? I don't know if they asked that question. Did they ask you uh, uh, where you were uh, before you went to McDonald's? I'm sure they did. What did you tell them? At home. Did they ask you um, when you got home after the recital? They possibly could have asked me that, yes. And what did you tell them? Probably, I didn't. Don't wasn't guess sure. or speculate well, what, what you probably. probably told them. Excuse no. me. I can't tell you what I probably told them, I'm sorry. Did but whatever time I got home, whatever my recollection was at that time, I told them. Did uh, you tell them that you went out to find Paula Barbieri? I might have told them I was going to see Paula, yes. Did you tell them that you got in the car and started to go? Possibly I could have told them that, yes. Okay. Did you uh, tell the officers uh, where you were when you came back from McDonald's? It, what, what, whatever they asked me, I told them. Well, did they ask you that question? I'm sure they did. And what did you tell them? I was at home. Did they uh, ask you um, what you were doing at home? No, they, they, they kept interrupting me whenever I was speaking and would ask me another question and I would answer. And did they ask you when you left to go to the airport? I believe so. And what did you tell them? I believe approximately 11 o'clock. Did they ask you where were you from 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock? I don't know. 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock? I don't know if they said, asked me that specifically. Do you remember telling them where you were between 10 and 11 o'clock? I remember answering every question they asked me. What did you tell them about where you were between 10 and 11 o'clock on June 12th? Well, 
think he, he, first of all has testified he doesn't remember if they asked that question, number one. And number two, I think you, you ask it at least three or four times. Well, Mr. Baker, the difficulty here is that he has said that he told them all about uh, you know, the case, in effect, uh, before uh, the tape recorder went on. And there isn't any document, and I need to find out what he said to them. Well, I'm giving you wide latitude, but I think if, if well, when you have no foundation for it, it, it goes beyond the pale. Uh, wide latitude. Time. These are just uh, these are just well, simple questions. Well, well, what I'm saying about wide latitude is wide latitude to ask it three and four times. Uh, can Can you tell me what you told Van Adder and Lang before the tape recorder went on, or after the tape recorder went off, where you were between ten and eleven? Whatever they asked me, I told them. Whatever they asked me, I told them. I recall that. Yes. What did you say? If I don't you have recall. A recollection, tell them. I don't recall specifically what they asked me. I do know that the subject matters were who did I go to McDonald's with. I told them that the subject matters were, uh, you know, uh, approximately what time I got home from the uh, recital. Uh, the subject matters were uh, my luggage. Uh, all of those things they ask me, and I don't see them on their police report. Well, and that's why I'm asking you to tell well, me. I'm just to tell you what. What you said, because I told them I went to McDonald's at approximately nine o'clock. I told them I got home uh, after the recital. They could check whatever time it was over. And I, I don't recall today if I knew if I was as clear to them that it was seven o'clock. But probably I told them it was around seven o'clock. I told them uh, what luggage I took. Uh, to Chicago. I told them what luggage I brought back from the Chicago. All of those questions uh, they asked, I answered, and many of them I don't see on their police report, so, and I don't think they're, they're 17 and 20 year detectives, so I think it's obvious they asked those questions and I answered them. Well, what I want to know is what answers you gave. To what? Ask me the question like they asked me, and I'll give you an Where answer. Where were you between 10 and 11? I don't know if they asked me that question. I was if they, home. If they did ask you, what did you say? I don't recall if they asked me, so I don't know what I said. Yeah. Why don't you ask me? I just did. Where were Why you? Why don't you ask me? Because right, no, wait a minute. Time because we're going to take, take a break right here. No. <laughs> well, you know, we're going to take a break right here. I don't think it's appropriate to take the break because we're in the middle of an examination, Mr. Huh? Baker. But I see that I can't stop you. <laughs> we are going off the record now, and the time is approximately 10.34. I'll try to. I'll try to. I'll try to do it better. We are back on the We've had uh, a somewhat uh, lengthy break. Um, I was questioning you about uh, what you said to Van Adder and Lang uh, that was not recorded on the tape, and I want to go back to that. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me what you told them uh, where you were between 10 and 11 on June 12th. I don't recall. Uh, I do not recall them specifically asking me that, so I can't recall what my specific answer would have been to them then. You recall them generally asking you that? I, I just recall that everything that they asked me, I answered them as truthfully as I could. And what I want to know is what you said to them, so I have a record of it. I just can't recall now exactly what I told them, but whatever they asked me, I answered them. Do you know anything that would refresh your recollection as to what you said? No. What did you tell them about the cuts on your hand? They what do you mean cuts on his hand? There's no evidence of cuts on his hand on the 13th. There's evidence of a cut. Oh. First of all, he said cuts on his hand before, but I won't trouble right. waste time here. Mm -hmm. What did you tell them about the cuts on your hand or cut on your hand? I cut my hand in Chicago. What else did you tell them? That I saw some blood on uh, before I left and I once again this is Maya but I assumed I had cut my hand then. Well, what did you tell them about how, how you cut your hand before you went to Chicago? I don't think I told them anything because I don't know how. And you told them you didn't know how you cut it? I told them I saw blood and uh, I didn't have any specific memory of cutting my hand and I never saw a cut. Did you tell them that you saw the blood coming from some particular part of your hand? I can only assume I did, yes. What did you tell them? I don't know specifically here two years later what I told them specifically, no. 
What did you tell them uh, what time it was when you saw the blood? I don't recall if, if I did or didn't tell them that. I don't recall that. What did you tell them about where blood was dropped in your, uh, if anywhere, in your house? I, I really don't recall specific, the specifics of that conversation here two, nearly two years later. I just don't recall the specifics of those conversations. But I do know, in general, those are things that we talk about during the tape and not during the tape, yes. Did you ask them to record these portions of the discussion you were having off the tape? I didn't ask them to do anything but tell me what had happened in the coal and let me go home. Did they tell you? No. And you had no idea? Correct. Did, uh, you, did you tell them that you had more than one cut on your hand? I don't believe so. Okay. Did you point out where on your finger you had cut yourself before going to Chicago? No. Did you point on your hand or finger where the blood was before you went to Chicago? Possibly. Did they say to you, uh, we found blood on your uh, driveway? Yes. And did they um, ask you if you had blood on the driveway? Possibly. What did you tell them? I don't recall. That's why I say possibly they asked me, but I don't recall here two years later mm -hmm. if we had a conversation about that. Did, did you tell them that... Uh, you were positive that the blood they found on your driveway was not your blood? I don't recall getting into that conversation with them. Did you believe at the time that it was not your blood? I had I never thought about it at the time. I didn't think anything about it at that time, not concerning me anyway. Did they tell you that they found blood in your Bronco? I don't think so. Did they tell you that they found blood in your house? I don't believe so. Did they tell you that they, they may have, they may have, but I don't believe so. And on that subject, what did you say to them? It wasn't a question, I don't believe. I don't believe there was any question of me. You don't believe they said that? Say it that, and, you know, they could have said it. What did you know. say to them when they said there's blood in, in your house? We found blood in your I house. I don't recall, but if they said that, I don't know what I would have said. There's nothing for me to say. If they're you, telling me things, I, they weren't asking me a question. Were you shocked to hear that there was blood in your house and on your driveway? I don't know if I heard if they said that. I don't know if I would have heard that. I wouldn't have been shocked. I was in shock that Nicole was murdered. I don't think any of the rest of this would have shocked me. That there was blood in your house and on your property? Well, I think you asked me for speculation. Now he's answered that, and, and well, I'm instructed not trying to. Trying to get to his state of mind at the time so we can see what he was well, thinking and yeah. what he said. Regardless, the state of mind. Don't answer the question. What? He'll re ask the question. Yeah, I'll re ask one. Did they tell you that uh, there was blood at Bundy? I don't think we talked about Bundy. We may have, but I don't recall. What did you tell them about your luggage? I told them where it was when they asked me where it was. Where was it? My bag that was with me was there. I thought the other bag was at the gate because I didn't, wasn't aware at the time that they wouldn't let Kathy on the property with it. And I told them that uh, I didn't know where my golf clubs were because I didn't wait to take them on the uh, plane with me. What other bag was at the gate? My Louis Vuitton bag. Wait, and that's what you told them? Yes. And you said you didn't know where your golf clubs were? Yeah, I didn't think they, I didn't know if they made the flight or not. Did they ask, ask you off the tape where, uh, what all the luggage was that you took to Chicago? No, I don't believe so. They just asked you where your luggage was, right? Yes, I believe it was Lang that said, well, that's all the luggage you had, because I only had the bag on me, and I told him no. You said the Louis Vuitton was at the gate, you didn't know where your clubs were, right? Yes. And what about that other piece of luggage? You didn't mention that to them? What other piece of that luggage? That bluish bag that had the uh, windbreaker and the Maxfly 100s. Well, I don't think I viewed that as a piece of luggage. It was like my golf bag. Everything that was in my golf bag was in my golf bag. To me, that wasn't a piece of luggage, just like my overnight kit. Is in a separate bag. I don't view that as a separate piece of luggage. Did they ask you uh, what clothing you were wearing before you went to Chicago? Yes. What did you tell them? Whatever I was wearing. What was that that you said to them? I don't recall the specific words. Uh, um, I actually showed Lang what I was wearing. There at the police station? No, once we got back to my house. You, you had more conversations in your house? Yes. Uh, that evening? Yes. 